I'm sure you've seen this move done tens of thousands of times by TikTokers, Instagrammers, YouTubers, everybody. And chances are, if you're someone like me, you probably saw it first performed by the man himself, David Blaine. Don't say it, just hold it in your mind. I know this is not it, but visualize your card right here. But fun fact, although he popularized the move, it was actually created by the guy we'll be talking about today, Sir Edward Marlowe. If you're anything like me, when I first started magic, I did not give a flying flip about who created what. All I wanted to do was learn magic, impress my friends, learn more magic, impress more friends, and that that's it. It was the whole thing. So maybe you can relate to me, maybe you can't, but regardless, you have to learn about these super influential people who have literally changed magic. Because let me tell you, the more you learn about these people, the more you know their story, the more confidence you'll have in your performances knowing the background of where everything came from. Now, I really couldn't find a whole lot in the beginnings of Ed Marlowe but I ended up finding a lot of cool stuff that I think would be interesting for you because you know I found it interesting so and also I'll be putting all my sources in the description so if you want to learn even more you can go check that out so without any further ado let me introduce Edward Marlowe oh and by the way I'll be doing a giveaway in this video so make sure to like subscribe and stick around for your chance to win now let's do it the year is 1913 Edward Stephen Malkowski is born in Chicago Growing up, he would make his living as a tool and die maker, but his other identity was one of a cardition, a term he published in 1953 for those people who are card magicians, so you know, cardition. Malkowski's first contributions appeared in the Topps magazine in 1937, but his first contribution under the name Ed Marlowe appeared in 1938 in his booklet Pasteboard Presto. And throughout his life, he published countless books, articles, magazines, and everything in between. Since he lived in Chicago and built up such a great skill set, he became kind of the center of the magic scene for sleight of hand, even though he was not a professional performer. I'm not a professional performer either. Maybe I could become the center of magic in New Jersey. But on Saturday afternoons, he would demonstrate his non-card related sleight of hand abilities at a local magic shop called Bayer's Treasure Chest. But of course, the man's true obsession was card magic. That's literally why he came up with the term cardition, as I mentioned before, in his book called The Cardition. Maybe I should come up with something like that. You know, like the card, ah, damn it, card mechanics taken. Card technicians, carnitions. But his obsession was at a level that where one of his disciples actually said, Marlowe wanted to invent every single method possible for handling cards. I'm here trying to learn existing moves like. So here's one thing you have to realize. When you have an obsession with something, you do not care what other people are and aren't doing. You are just solely focused. You're on your own world with you and your obsession together. And in my opinion, I feel like this kind of leads to why Ed Marlowe was such a controversial figure when it came to magic. He spent a lot of his time creating moves, whether they had been created before or not. And he felt like if it was something that quote unquote he created, he was fine with publishing it in his books, magazines, or whatever else. Which makes sense unless, you know, someone else already published it. Harry Lorraine stated in an interview with Magic Newswire that this was Marlowe's code of ethics. If Marlowe figured out a routine on his own, he felt like it was fine to publish. But if someone told him how it was done, he would not publish that version. And he also wanted credit when it came to his own work, so he was kind of looking for the best of both worlds, which rarely ever turns out well for anyone. So I don't want to go too deep into that topic, but I feel like I have to mention that. Moving forward to the 1970s, 1980s, the card magic industry was booming, and there was a bit of an alleged competition between Ed Marlowe and Di Vernon. Or at least many people viewed it that way. It was the mid-US versus the West Coast. And I think Marlowe probably paid a little bit of attention to it himself, but Vernon gave it little to no thought. I would 100% be like an exaggerated version of Marlowe. Hey, you think you're better than me? It doesn't really matter to me. I just love magic. Oh yeah? Prove it. No, I'm not gonna do that. But Vernon was actually a whole generation older than Marlowe, so he didn't really see them as contemporaries. And I believe the difference between them was that Marlowe, although he was an incredible technician, was more focused on releasing new moves, new effects, and just doing as much as he possibly could. Whereas Vernon was more focused on getting out the best versions of his own work. But nonetheless, irrespective of how they approached magic, they are both in the Hall of Fame for magicians in my book. And later in Marlowe's life, he was actually welcomed into the magic castle and recognized on stage along with Di Vernon, which I'm sure he enjoyed. Being recognized for your work is probably one of the greatest feelings that you get in life. <laughs> if only I got recognized. 
and in 1991, at the age of 78, Ed Marlowe passed away. But the amount that he has contributed to the card magic community is nothing short of incredible. He was an excellent cardition and technician when it came to handling cards, and his legacy continues through his work, books, manuscripts, contributions, and magazines. And in case you want to check out his skills, I'll put the link down in the description for some of his performances that you'll find to be pretty good. Like pretty good. And if you want to study all the work he's done as well, I'll put the link to that in the description as well. One thing to note is that his writings are a bit dry and difficult to comprehend, as if it wasn't difficult enough learning sleight of hand from normal books. There is actually a study guide that was put together on how to learn and interpret Marlowe's work. Like that, that's crazy to think about. Like imagine if I released a YouTube video and then someone released a video talking about how to learn from my YouTube videos. Like what? You know what? I think I'd actually watch that. Ed Marlowe was truly a revolutionary when it came to impacting the world of card magic. You know, it sounds like I'm ending one of my essays that I wrote in like middle school. Ed Marlowe, the revolutionary cardition. But anyway, if you really want to improve your magic, I'd highly encourage you to take a look into his contributions, his uh, books, magazines, articles, and all that stuff. So I'll put the link to that in the description as well. There's a lot of stuff down there. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little bit more about Ed Marlowe. And this video took me like ages to make, so I'd appreciate you hitting that like button if you truly enjoyed this content. And now, it's time for the giveaway. So first of all, I would like to thank Vance Bokas and Felix He for sponsoring a total of four decks of playing cards to give away. You guys are awesome. And if you're interested in giving back to the community, feel free to head over to the card mechanic shop and sponsor a deck of playing cards to give away. So here's what usually happens. All the decks that are sponsored go to one person, but this time I wanted to switch it up. I will have two, that's right two giveaway winners. Each will win a deck of Candace Supers playing cards and for the first time ever, an uncut sheet as well. They're already packed and ready to go, so I'm ready. Are you? All you have to do is comment down below something you learned about Ed Marlowe from this video or a fun fact that you already knew and then end that comment with hashtag giveaway at the end. And don't use that fact that I just showed you, uh, pick something else. You have 48 hours from the release of this video to get your entries in. I always wanted to do that. But anyway, the winners will be announced shortly after that on my YouTube community page. Good luck to all of you. Thanks so much for spending your time with me and I'll see you really soon. Oh, oh, you, you stayed around till the end. Well, I have something for you. Ed Marlowe's favorite card was the Seven of Diamonds. So, knowledge is power.